Four days ago, the Utah Jazz appeared a beaten team. Their season apparently headed for a dismal finish, falling short of their dream for an NBA title. If you got any competitive blood in, you come and play. If you don't, you just uh, try to get it over and go home. But Jerry Sloan's Jazz refused to die. Instead, they rose to the occasion. And in game five, in hostile Seattle, they delivered an intense, gut-wrenching effort, battling for every point, contesting every play, overcoming not only their opponent, but a history bereft of such heroic stands. For the Sonics, the triumph that seems so certain now appears tenuous. Do thoughts of past failures fill their minds? Can the unthinkable really happen again? Utah seeks to muscle a Game 7. Seattle hopes for a Game 6 celebration. With the season hanging in the balance, they do battle again tonight. is the NBA on NBC. The 1996 NBA Conference Finals. The Delta Center in Salt Lake City is the site of Game 6 of the Western Conference Finals between the Seattle Sonics and the Utah Jazz. Greg will have more on this in a little bit, but Jerry Sloan said he absolutely has to have him on the court. I expect the same tonight, and Seattle actually plays better when they're behind. There's a steal, first one of the game. Stockton on the move. And that's a goal check. In five, the Utah Jazz feel that they have the Sonics figured out, and it's up to the Sonics to put some doubt in their mind. John Kent misses inside. What Stockton. Malone off the baseline. Started well in the games in this series. He'd worked his way into it. No call as players hit the deck. Spencer with a block on Shrimp. And it's Seattle ball with 10 seconds on the shot clock. And Horton said well above 20 per game. Kemp had a taken away jump ball. Malone was looking for a clean takeaway. Jess Kersey called a jump ball. You would think that Sean Kemp would know by now that that is Carl Malone's defense. And when you watch him go in, he keeps those elbows down in low to his body. If he would keep them wide and not allow Carl Malone to come in, he'd have an easy, easier time of it. Back outside, Urban Johnson. Kemp, long range. Sonic still scoreless. Then in games four and five combined, and we're just in the first two and a half minutes. Malone, fall away. Peyton in the corner. Now on the drive. Has to give it up. Tries to protect it, can't keep it. Stop it. To Malone. Kemp and Sam Perkins on the floor. Stockton. Stops and pops. Spencer. Felton Spencer. Everybody playing. And guys like Chris Morris and Felton Spencer. They end up just rolling over their opponents, as Sean Kemp did that time in low. All in transmission, Carl Malone, oh. And Kemp with the steal, though, he's on the line. Yeah, he agrees with the official good call. He did. Then they'll have a chance to quiet the crowd, get some things going. Stop Stopped him down the lane. Malone looked like Malone with the reach in. Oh, McMillan. There's just no spring. It's oh, the outlet for Malone. But that was a big-time rebound and outlet by Chris Morris. So Morris, who only played eight minutes in the last game, certainly is going to do better that in the first quarter. Shot. Well, that's one of Seth's first shot. He wanted to get into the fray. <laughs> nice pass. Oh, stop the move. Peyton have really gotten aggressive against that Howard Isley. They tried to double him off the ball. Nice feet. 
It was when Isley was in the game as Foster picks up another foul away from the ball on Kim. <laughs> How many is John have? He got two. <laughs> Peyton across the lane, got foul. Isley is there. You know, when the Jazz are here in the Delta Center, they run. And there's an example. He was a high school idol of Isaiah Thomas. A pretty good player in his own right. Kemp spins, got fouled on the baseline, and he'll shoot two. Jazz by 15. Chris Morris left open. Joker. Chris Morris with awesome game four. Askew ahead of the pack and scores. Askew game in this series. Spencer got it back outside. Stockton down the lane. Over the years in the NBA, his has stayed remarkably high. Try, trying to find someone to get them started. Sean Kemp comes back. Carr and Malone at the same time. Oh, breakdown defensively. Chris Moore's got to step out on that one. On their way down court, watch the battle being waged between Utah's Carl Malone and Sean Kemp of Seattle. Kemp, with his penchant for foul trouble, does not often guard Carl Malone. And we ask Carl, uh, what happened? What would happen if the two of them went head to head full time? I know, I know. Sean's a great player, and Sean liked to go at every every opportunity he wanted to get a block. And every time I have Coach to run six straight plays at him which is our 24, well, a lot of mine. And I say, Coach, first 10 played running for me. So I would say he probably have, he probably played, Coach Cardinal, I'm upset that he's playing 25 minutes a game, and I think he'll probably play about five or six, five, he got it. Stockton so on top of everything, spreading the floor, kicks it out to Brian Russell, and then Malone is working so hard for that deep position. As series go on, oftentimes guys give up that low position and settle for the perimeter shot. Not so with Carl Malone. He was taking Chris Morris to task early, but they brought Russell in, and Russell seems to bother him at the offensive end. Nothing bothering Carl Malone tonight. Nick Foster just took clearing Sean Kemp out, allowing Malone to sweep the board. Morrison. the Sonics want to do is try to find some sort of offensive rhythm. Should they lose this game, they want to know that they can come back and get something. Draw the defense in and kick it out to spot up shooters like Hornacek. Kemp spins on Malone, gets his own rebound and puts it back and he'll go to the line. A turnover for just two points off turnovers against Utah. Foul against Sam Perkins. State of Utah. Stockton. Kicks it back to Malone for the jumper. And he got the roll. 16 for Carl Malone. Shrimp kicks it back to McMillan. Kemp top of the key. Got it. Sean Kemp with a two-pointer. Hornacek thought about it. Going to look for a better shot. Has it taken away by Shrimp. Here come the Sonics. Three on one. Peyton for Shrimp. Battle's done their job. has won in every game of this series so far. Stockton. Nice outlet from Felton Spencer. Basket at the three-point line. They're allowing us too easy of a access to the lane. Peyton, freebie for three. Hornacek off the pick. Malone on the baseline gets his own rebound. Nineteen for Carl Malone and some big time shoving along the baseline for that rebound. Greg, we've been here all spring in Salt Lake City, and no one has been willing to get up there and mix it up physically with Carl. Guys just standing around watching as he keeps pushing, keeps shoving. The guy with not great leaping ability off of two feet, Carl Malone. Believers after the victory Tuesday night that everybody who packed up your truck unpack it. <laughs>
Foul is on Stockton. That's number two. Well, Stockton saying, hey, you give and you take. Call on him. I don't mind you calling on me. Good closeout, Stockton. Count with a quick turnaround and a double pump. That's good. Foul. Zero for Devil Shrimp. Stockton followed by Peyton. They're trying to set things up so they can get calls later. Peyton comes in the lane and will get a block. And that is now three on Gary Peyton. He was fouled back from the jab. Hornacek for three. We're not in this series just to hang around. You know, we're in this series because we feel that if we, if we would have did some things right. It's the first game, Greg, that Stockton has outplayed Gary Payton. Stockton with the leaner, doesn't fall. Kemp has the rebound. The points and seven assists and not a turnover so far tonight. Sean, Sean, Sean Kemp is trying to lead this team, put him on his shoulders, gives up the breakaway. And Kemp will send Carl Malone to the free throw. Begins Sunday, 7.30 Eastern time. Michael Jordan and the Bulls against Sean Kemp and the Sonics here on NBC. Back comes Seattle. Kemp. And he'll go to the line. The foul from Felton Spencer. If that three footer had that key offensive rebound in the overtime, got himself to the foul line. Malone forcing his way inside. The floor. Hornacek playing with that twisted knee from game five. Hornacek, quick shot. Quarter. Perkins bypasses the three, gets the pass back from Peyton. Six points for Felton Spencer. Perkins left alone. And he'll go to the line, courtesy of Felton Spencer. Yep. Tonight, we are a minute 50 away from the end of the third. 12 in the quarter for Hornacek. Shrimp gets it to go. Curry to give to Askew. No call. Rebound. Malone. And now Askew comes back for the foul. But they've got to do a better job of establishing themselves here in the final 12 minutes of play. Here they are, 34 and 33 years old. Now they got three days to get ready. Stockton with the steal. Malone on the run. There they are. They work hard, and uh, certainly everyone hopes that they get a chance to play in a final, but they know how tough the Sonics are in their building. Remember that the Utah Jazz have been humbling their opponents here in the Delta Center, and they've been winning by huge with a three. The trademark of the Sonics. Hawkins cannot buy a hoop. Peyton follows, misses everything. Kemp is there to slam it home. It's 11 assists. Gary Payton, 8 points, 7 assists. Malone draws the foul. 24. Payton turns the corner and scores. 10 for Gary Payton. That's all that athletic play for Utah to get back in their rhythm. Russell fouls Kemp. They set up the pick and roll, and Stockton says he doesn't need it. Hornacek for three. The <laughs> dagger. It's a Utah night. Stockton down the lane. Picked off by Kemp. And Hornacek steps in. Malone. You get a chance to make it a three point play. Hornacek shooting 50% from behind the line tonight and 60% from the floor. Peyton had it taken away. And Askew with the foul from behind. But and this is another whistle. This is what you play for. You've got one game. One game to make the rest of their lives and get to the NBA Finals. To keep the crowd out of the game, that the Jazz have gotten a better lead on what they're doing, and that Carl Malone steps in, makes it. Beautiful entry pass. Greg, I'm here with Carl Malone. 32 points for number 32 tonight. What are you going to do in the next 72 hours? I'm just going to relax. Uh, it was a great victory, but one of my uh, closest friends, he don't have long to live. The little boy that is right there, so it's tough. It's a bittersweet win because of that, but 
I'm just going to relax and try to spend some time with him and my family and stuff like that to get ready for Sunday. But it's a great win, but it's kind of a you know tough time because of the fact that he's not expected to live long. So I'm just going to relax. Are the Sonics now on their heels? Do you have them where you want them? Well, I, I guess uh, we still got one more game to play. You know, it was a great win, great effort. But I think we're concerned about what we're doing. And if we do what we're supposed to do, we'll be fine. But I think the guys played tremendous basketball. I was against us. Nobody expected us to win up there, and they sure didn't expect us to win today. So I think that shows a lot of character about this team. It was one victory, but we're looking forward to playing up there on Sunday. There's a lot of emotion that you have right now, isn't there? Well, yeah, because, uh, I don't know, this is just a game. And when I see my friend like Daddy that's not expected to live long, it's not a tough. It's a great win, but... You know, my heart and go out to him and his family, and, and you know, God bless him. So it was a great win for him. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. All right, All right Greg, back to you. Thanks, Greg. John, tonight you had 14 points, 12 assists, just one turnover. But Gary Payton said that regardless of the outcome tonight, that he feels that the Sonics are going to win Game 7. How do you approach Game 7? You've never been in this position before. Uh, just like any other game, I, I've always tried to simplify and make it a one-game series, and, and that's really what we're down to. Uh, any way you look at it, it's a one-game series, and, and I think it should be a lot of fun. Only five times in the history of the NBA has a team come back from 3-1. With all this emotion, do you feel it can spill over and carry over to well, uh, Sunday? I'm not really worried about the 3-1. Uh, I'm worried about one for one. And, and that, again, simplifies things and uh, just makes, makes our focus pretty simple. We have to go win one game, one tough game in Seattle. John, we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thank you very much. All right, back over to you, Greg.